Well, it's finally here. The long talked about, by me, comparison between the Zeiss Bodice 25mm f2.0 and the Sony G Master 24mm f1.4. I use both of these lenses all the time on my Sony a7 III for both photo and video. Now for landscape shots, um, environmental portraits, or video shoots like weddings or interviews, these two lenses are just unreal. Now I always have one of these with me. It, they're like the perfect complement with the bodice 85 millimeter, especially when it comes to a lot of the client shoots that I do, um, which tend to be interview setups. They're both just so good, but they're also very different in how they operate. The features that stand out on each lens and their functionality when it comes to video uh, can be a little bit different between the two lenses. So let's go over a little bit about each lens and their features, and then we'll dig into some photos and some video. Now I've talked quite a bit already about the Zeiss Bodice 25 millimeter, and if you wanna see my full review of this lens, head right over here. But we'll go over all the things again for the kids in the back. The Bodice 25 is light and sleek. It weighs in at 0.74 pounds for those of you who use pounds. And the body of the lens has absolutely nothing mechanical going on other than the rubber focus ring, which I've actually talked at length about. It's a focus by wire system as most mirrorless camera lenses are, meaning that it focuses using a motor that's controlled by the focus ring rather than actually the ring uh, physically moving the elements of the lens. I'm not a huge fan of how this particular focus ring works though. Uh, the rubber is nice, it feels good, it feels like expensive, but as you turn it, um, it doesn't have any ridges and nothing really tactile going on other than it being completely smooth So it's difficult for me to nail focus when running in manual The only other thing you'll see on the outside of this lens is that super groovy OLED screen that tells you your focusing distance um, I've been a little hard on this nifty yet useless feature in other videos um, But I've used it here and there when focusing outdoors doing the astrophotography And I've definitely used it in interview setups where I want to make sure that my focusing distance is the same from subject to subject on different uh, Multiple interviews. It's weather sealed and has this blue gasket at the uh, lens mount to ensure nothing muddles up the sensor It fits snugly in the e-mount and it looks great on the old a7 III now the Sony G Master 24mm 1.4 has a few more features that give it a bump in my book. It's a great looking lens as well and is super light on the camera. It weighs in at just under a pound. It has a manual aperture ring so that you can change the aperture on the lens body or in the camera uh, by setting the ring to the A marker. Now you can also choose to de-click it or have it click when turning the ring. This is probably the weirdest option and feature that I've run across in a lens. I mean, I'm fairly new to the world, so I'm sure it's common, but I can't imagine not wanting to know if I've suddenly changed my aperture or not, so I just leave it clicked all the time. The G Master also has a focus hold button that comes in really handy when you're out in the field and wanna make sure that you're nailing your focus area, but it can also be programmed uh, to other functions. The focusing ring itself is much more suited to the kind of work that I do. It feels more like a cinema lens, and even though it also is focused by wire, I'm able to land more accurate focus when I'm on gigs, uh, where I need to jump into manual, or when I need to uh, pull focus. Now the feature I like the most on the body of this lens is that I have the option to switch between manual and autofocus right on the body of the lens. Even though I'm extremely well acquainted with my a7 III, uh, being able to keep my eye in the viewfinder or on the screen when I'm I'm doing video and just move my finger to switch to manual focus uh, comes in extremely handy. The lens is also moisture and dust resistant itself, uh, but there's no gasket on the back to protect uh, the seal between the camera and the lens. Both lenses use a 67 millimeter filter thread and have a very similar lens hood. Now I love how all the bodice lenses look with their hoods on. They're like pieces of art to me. The 85 millimeter is particularly sleek. The G Master's lens hood is nice and, and has a felt kind a liner that loves to attract all the dust and lint in the world, so I find this a weird thing to line anything associated with a lens with. Both lenses look amazing on the a7 III. Uh, the bodice has that look of like a modern art museum, while the G Master feels like it was a baby made by the a7 III. Uh, it just 
fits perfectly. So let's jump in and look at some of the photos and uh, compare the two side by side. Now each photo is raw. Now these are right out of camera um, with the exception of the very last two that I'll show you. Uh, I did put a touch of saturation, a little bit of contrast in there just to, to give the pictures a little bit more of a pop. Uh, but everything else uh, that you're gonna see is raw and untouched uh, so that we can really compare the two images side by side. Now our first photo is from, actually I shot this at the cemetery during almost at the very end of a sunset, just after it snowed, super cold day, because that's extremely relevant to the photo. Uh, I just saw, I wanted to get something, you know, just sort of environmental, but also shoot, uh, this was just to go see what they were both like, wide open. ISO 800, one over 1000, um, 1 1.4 of course with the G Master and at 2.0. Strangely, I actually really enjoy the bodice a little bit more. I think for this kind of a picture, um, seeing a little bit more of the story is nice, but I also get to see a little bit difference in the bokeh. And so the back behind this tree, you see the difference between 2.0 and what 1.4 is going to give you. But I think the real the real reason that I you know thought this was interesting is is the sharpness of the bark um, on the G Master. It's it's incredibly sharp. It is that's exactly what I was looking for from the G Master. It's not it's obviously wonderful on the bodice. It's just if you're pixel peeping like we are right now, just a touch sharper on the G Master. But that's you know we're not I'm not mad at either one of them. I do though, however, enjoy the contrast just a little bit more in the bodice and just a little bit more of that story being told. But maybe it would be a different we'd be having a different conversation if they, if I shot them both at at 2.0. But in this case, I really do love them both. But the bodice is definitely edging it out just because of that color saturation as well as the the contrast in that. This photo um it went with something a little bit different. So it went with a uh, what. I mean, I guess it's not really a macro shot, but I wanted to do something a little bit up close. This is a toy. It's only like a six, I don't have them here, but it's, you know, six inch figure or something like that um, of a store, shor, store, the storm trooper, shore trooper, I think is what it's called. I know what it's called. It's a shore trooper. I'm a dork. So the, um, but what's really apparent right out the gate is that the contrast on the bodice is significantly uh, different. It's a little bit deeper and richer. Again, both of these photos are raw. So this is you're just this is what you're getting out of camera. The story is a little bit more interesting as well with the the bodice being at 2.0 over the G Master 1.4. Now I used a flash on this. This is actually the first day I actually ever used an a flash that was uh, you know an off camera flash. I was using the the Flashpoint 8600, I think. Um, I don't remember what I bought, but it made a really cool photo. But what's cool is I just I like the the saturation of the bodice both at ISO 100, both at 1 over 6400. Now, they were on a tripod, both of them. So to get, I wanted to make sure that I got it as crisp and clear as possible. And you can see that the, I mean, the G Master almost is like focusing perfectly like on the tip of his mask. It's like, it's crazy how sharp it is. The bodice is doing just fine as well, but you're actually getting a little bit more detail, a little bit more of that, again, that contrast and saturation right out of the, the bodice, right out the gate. Um, and I sprinkled some snow as I was shooting it. I, it's just, I, the bodice ended up being just a better picture overall, uh, but both amazing photos and uh, just, I'm blown away by the sharpness of the G Master and that saturation, the, the contrast coming out of the bodice. I'll try not to say contrast anymore. Then I wanted to go do a, an environmental portrait. That was one of the things that I loved the most about the bodice was the environmental portraits that I've been able to take. Um, so my friend Aaron and I did a little like hot tub time machine thing. And uh, what was so what, so what I did with this one is I shot the 24 G Master at 2.0 as well as the bodice. So I was comparing them just at the exact same aperture shooting at ISO 800 1 over 200 was not using a flash on this I was actually using my 120d mark mark 2 words are hard 
Aperture 120D Mark II. Same thing I'm using to shoot this right now with a uh, blue gel on it. So that blue gel with the, the bodice, you're getting a slightly more teal color right out of the camera. And with the, the G Master, we're getting uh, more of that true blue that was in there. Look at the top here. Um, what's interesting is the, the bokeh, oops, the bokeh is pretty much exactly the same when we're shooting at 2.0 on both of them. Both pretty pleasing, both really nice. The sharpness is killer. Um, again, G Master is just a little bit sharper, although I think I had a touch of camera shake on the bodice photo. But overall, I mean, both amazing photos, but again, sharpness of the of the G Master just really, really killing it. Um, but the again, the contrast of the bodice is, is just overwhelmingly gorgeous. Oh, and yeah, I uh, haven't activated Windows yet. I probably bought a lens instead of Windows. And then the last one here, what I've got... Oh, you know what? Let's go back for a second. One, one thing that I didn't do. I didn't do a focus comparison, autofocus comparison. Now, the reason that I didn't do that is because there's a ton of videos out there on this lens and other Sony lenses comparing the, the autofocus. And it's just not a test that interested me because it really was just more about being in the field. So Aaron and I shot like five, 600 photos that day. I was using eye autofocus and on both the G Master and the Bodice, it was killing it. It's lightning fast. It's perfect on both lenses. If anything, the G Master maybe edges out the Bodice just a touch, but nothing noticeable by any stretch of the imagination. And even though I missed focus just slightly on that photo uh, of Aaron, because I probably jiggled a little bit, the eye autofocus, of course, is active. It's working like crazy. And so I would say that they're pretty much exactly the same. Autofocus for video as well is unbelievable. It will it just dials in on the faces so well. Uh, I just wish that it had the eye autofocus, the active eye autofocus that the A7R4 has. But that said, it's just it's just not a problem. And I mean, with the Sony system, autofocus is probably one of the things that drew me to it in the first place, and it never disappoints me. So the reason I took this photo, I took some close-up photos of each of the lenses. I wanted to compare the bokeh. That was the thing. So we're at ISO 200, 1 over 100, um, and wanted to see with these sort of Christmas lights what we're seeing. And I mean, it's just like, when you do it like this, when you get this close, there's really no comparison. The, look at that bokeh. This is insane, man. It's gorgeous. It's unbelievable. And look at the sharpness. It's just crazy. The G Master is as far as bokeh and sharpness is concerned obviously is just overwhelmingly beautiful it just takes amazing pictures I'm not mad at this it's just you know you get those lemony um like onion peel sort of things going on with the bokeh on here uh, the sharpness of course is amazing though still but i just if you're doing anything that requires that background separation and you really want to get that wide open look the G Master is just unreal. Um, so that's where the two lenses, I think, just differ. Obviously, 1.4 and 2.0, you're going to get a completely different look. But when it comes to, I guess people always say quality of the bokeh. I don't really know if I buy into that. But if I was going to buy into that, it would be because of a photo like this where you just see the quality the of the of what the g master is is giving you there so i mean there's your comparison and uh both gorgeous lenses both offering you something in the sharpness and in the contrast department you're not going to go wrong with either of them but for my money i will shoot with the the g master all day long for video, I love these two lenses. The Bodice 25 captures amazing color and contrast. It gives you extremely cinematic video and it's an absolute joy to color and post. The G Master is amazingly sharp. It's, it's almost jarring how sharp it really is. Uh, the first time I used it at a wedding, my jaw dropped when I saw the dance floor through the monitor. It was crazy. I've used both these lenses in weddings and interviews. And while I love them both, the manual focus switch and and that little bit of extra bit of light and background separation you get from being at 1.4 with the G Master really just kind of puts it over the edge in my book.
One thing to consider when deciding which wide angle to get though is the price and availability. Now I got my G Master when it was insanely hard to find. That was about like three months ago. And uh, I just got lucky one day on B&H and I was just scrolling and re refreshing. Uh, the Bodice 25 though is not that hard to find and it's still under a thousand bucks. Used, you can probably get the Bodice for like 750 in really good condition. And so at that price, it's an absolute steal. The G Master is readily available right now and comes in at just under like 1400 bucks. So uh, it's great deal and Good luck finding it used. No one is letting this thing go. So at $400 more uh, new, I think the G Master is what I would go with all day. Now, if you're strictly a photographer and have little use for being at 1.4, then the bodice is for you. The color, the contrast, um, that Zeiss pop is just perfect for environmental portraits and landscape shots. I've taken some of my all time favorite photos with this lens. But if you're a hybrid shooter or you do a lot of video and you're a filmmaker, then the G Master is what you have to go with. The manual controls make it perfect for run and gun shooting, um, but it's that bokeh, that background separation at 1.4, that's what makes this lens really special. It's gonna be hard for me to say goodbye to my Bodice 25. As I mentioned, some of my favorite shots of all time were with this lens, and that Zeiss 3D pop is so apparent in the video and the photo that you get from it. But I don't need two lenses at basically the same focal length, so I'm probably gonna replace it with either the Sony Zeiss 35 millimeter Distagon or that beautiful 135 G Master. So if you guys have any thoughts on all of that, I would love to hear what you would get next. I'd also love to hear which of these two wide angle beasts you've got and why it is that you love them. Thank you for stopping by. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you supporting this channel and everyone who has subscribed so far and commented, it's just been a fantastic time interacting with you all. I hope that some of this was helpful to you in your own artistic journeys. Um, so until next time, go grab your camera, get out there, and uh, be creative. Catch you later.